Hello friends, welcome to Nigra Techies. This is our ASP.NET Core tutorial. Part of this video, I am going to explain how to create my first .NET Core application using Visual Studio. So once it's created the Visual Studio, I am trying to explain the folder structure and also explain this MVC concept. First, let me go to my Visual Studio. So in my last series, I have did the installation and the setup. Hope you already have the setup. So I am opening this Visual Studio 2020. Okay. For creating the new application, first you have to click this create a new project. So basically this screen will load all the existing templates. Okay. If you are already used to some template, it will show in the left side. Otherwise in the right side, you can see all the existing template. For in case, if you want MVC, you just to type here. Okay, the MVC is coming in case if you want to create a console application, you just click and type the text based on that it will show the required templates. And also we have some basic uh, searches like, so if you want to create the application using which language, so defaultly CC Sharp is selected in case if you want to select some other languages, so you can choose accordingly. And the next one is platform. So initial day itself, I have mentioned the .NET Core application providing this cross platform support. So if required, you can choose some other platforms also. So the available platforms are the Android, Azure, iOS, Mac, Windows. So, so many things was there. So let me keep it as the all platforms, okay. And the final one is application type. So I am choosing this web. If you required to create some other kind of projects like a Blazor, or cloud, console, desktop, even games, I would internet of things. So whatever it's required, you have to choose this template. So I am now just choosing this web because I am planning to create an MVC application. And let me type it, MVC. Okay, this is the template for creating this MVC application. So now let me click next. So here uh, we have to provide the name first app and then you have to choose the location. So the final one is solution name. So basically if you are entering the project name the automatically included as the solution name. If you want to change the solution name, you just check this text box. Then you have to provide your own name. And also if you want to keep the solution also in the same directory, basically you have to click this one. Okay, and next. Okay, see here the framework. So the available, the highest framework, .NET 6.0 defaultly selected. In case if you want create the application using this lowest framework, you can choose the 5.0 and 3.1. Even 2.1 also available, but it's the out of support. So mostly they are closed to 2.1. So most of the application, I hope it's developed using 3.1, 5.0. That also the, they are Microsoft has just uh, upgrade the framework 6.0. Okay. And then this configure of HTTPS. Okay. So once you are developed the application, we are hosting. Okay. Before that, if you want to check something, the local host basically runs in the non-secured mode. So if you want to run the application using the secured mode, kind of HTTPS URL, then click this one. And the Docker, this is all about our wish only. And do not use the top level statement, it's fine. So finally, you have to click this create. So basically it will take some time and create the particular application. See now our project is created and some dependencies are still restoring. So now we are almost good. So first let me try to run the application. We can see the output. So after that we can do our required changes. Okay, see now our application default template is loaded. The first one is our application name and we are in the home link. 
so once i am clicked this privacy link it's redirected into the privacy the similar way we can uh, implement or else we can develop our changes so now let me explain the folder structure and what are the file source there for this dotnet core application so basically in the dotnet core first one is dependencies so if you see here inside the framework so the packages microsoft asp net core dot app the microsoft net core app the both packages was there so if required we can in include the different packages using this nuget package and we will see everything in the detail in upcoming videos definitely we may need to include the different packages for including this entity framework core and swagger so so many new features was there uh, while implementing the functionalities uh, we can include the, some new packages also so the next one is the four properties in the properties we can see this launch settings.json so basically while running the application uh, what are the urls and some running related configurations was available in this launch setting.json so if it's running in this ias or it's based on the local profiles so this information is available here and the next folder is ww root so this is the core uh, part i would say uh, if you have the contents like images or css js so that all files we can include this ww root folder so the next folder is controller so this is the part of mvc so we all know mvc is nothing but model view controller so that's what we have these three folders the first one is controller so i am trying to open the controller home controller okay and in the views the same name we have one folder this is the home controller so with the same name we have the folder and inside that we have the two CS HTML files one is for home page and another one is for privacy okay let me open it okay fine and the one more new main folder is this model so defaultly they have included this error view model so here after when we are developing the real-time application we may have n number of models so these all the informations we can include in the model folder and this shared folder so shared folder is nothing but keeping this uh, partial view for the standard of uh, .NET, sorry not a dotnet the standard of mvc so the first one is layout so this layout file is nothing but uh, it's similar to our master page in asp.net application and the next one is validation script partial here they have included some of the script files and this is the error file so we can customize this one and we have two more uh, CSS HTML. these are not that much important the final one is app settings.json so in the dotnet core application basically we don't have a web config file instead of that we will keep all the informations in this app settings.json and in this program.cs okay so we in case if you want to include some kind of connection string all the information we support to include in this app settings so after that in the program page uh, we have to get the information from the app setting that is all about the concept so this program.cs is the core of uh, core file like if you are deleted this file it's nothing will work because most of the configurations are gets included so once we started the real-time application for any concept definitely we will include more changes in this program.cs it's not a more changes definitely we supposed to register something okay and also our uh, routing concept also added here so you can see here and this use routing and authorization so the redirection and http error related things all are included in this place so this is all about the creating dotnet core application using this visual studio the similar way in my next video i am going to create the dotnet core application using vs code so for that we are going to create the application using this some command prompt once it's created uh, we can open the visual studio code and we have some commands based on that we can run and see the outputs 
and also our upcoming videos we can see all the topics one by one still if you have any doubts or clarification please post in the comment box and also i am request you to subscribe my channel and please stay tuned for my next video thank you thanks for watching